The Epistle of James, Chapter 1, Verses 5 through 11. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He is generous to everyone and will give you wisdom without criticizing you. But when you ask God, you must believe and not doubt. Anyone who doubts is like a wave in the sea, blown up and down by the wind. Such doubters are thinking two different things at the same time, and they cannot decide about anything they do. They should not think they will receive anything from the Lord. Believers who are poor should take pride that God has made them spiritually rich. Those who are rich should take pride that God has shown them that they are spiritually poor. The rich will die like a wildflower in the grass. The sun rises with burning heat and dries up the plants. The flower falls off and its beauty is gone. In the same way, the rich will die while they are still taking care of business. Welcome to the Sister Abigail Show. It's so good to be back with you again this Monday for part two of our Bible study as we travel verse by verse through the Epistle of James. Uh, last week we covered verses 1 through 4. Uh, this week we're going to do a short study and we're going to cover verses 5 through 11. All right. Now, last week we saw that trials uh, and difficulties are actually a benefit to us. Right, uh, we learned that these difficulties, that these hardships, these trials produce endurance in our lives, and we learned that uh, when we have endurance, that that we that we're growing, that we're being completed, uh, that we're being perfected, that we're maturing. And, uh, you know, Paul told the uh, Philippians, he said, Look, he who's begun a good work in you will perfect it unto the day of Christ Jesus. You know, so so he's perfecting us. He's, he's completing us. You know, we're given more wisdom for this life, more understanding about this world. You know, he's, he's giving us everything we need. You know, and that's that's why Peter wrote, you know, uh, in Second Peter 1, he said, look, his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him. You know, and you might have thought last week, look, Abby, you know, I'm, I'm with you, but not really, you know, my trials don't seem to do anything, but... Try my patience. You know, my difficulties aren't doing anything but being difficult. You know, I don't seem to be completed through them. I don't seem to be being perfected in these things. You know, I, I certainly don't see myself lacking in nothing. But I think James addresses this uh, uh, as, as we pick up in verse 5. You know, he talks about asking for wisdom. You know, the, the bottom line is that if you're not growing through your trials, it's because you're not turning to God and saying, Hey, Lord, what can I learn from this? You know, what wisdom is there for me to receive in this difficulty, in this trial? You know, so if you're not gaining uh growth through your trials, then the simple solution is to ask, you know, because it's God's desire to give you wisdom. You know, he wants to give so many good things to you. You know, uh, Jesus said, look, uh, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it'll be open to you. You know, everyone that asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, it shall be open. 
you know, and, and then he goes on to describe a, a, an earthly father, you know, uh, if asked by his son for a fish, you know, would he give him a snake? No way. You know, if he asked for an egg, is he going to give him a scorpion? No. And he said, look, if you guys got this right, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Show your heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him. Amen. You know, uh, during Christmas season, our heart swells, you know, with the desire to give gifts to those that we love. You know, you, you like to watch your children open their presents, you know, and, and, and have delight, you know, o over what they've been given. You know, and, and I think God is the same way. You know, I think God loves to give good gifts to his children. You know, I, I think that as God gives us these good gifts, it fills his heart with gladness. You know, do you believe that God wants to bless you? I mean, do you believe that God wants to give you gifts? You know, because I think so many of us uh, that, that are in the faith, we still think that, that God wants to bless everybody but us. You know, I have no problem thinking that God wants to bless you with gifts. You know, but I have a hard time believing it for myself. <laughs> you see, I know the sin in my own heart. I don't know it in yours, but, you know... I believe you're a generally good person whom God wants to bless and that I'm scum, right? But, but you know, here James tells us that he gives to all. You know, he gives generously without reproach. You know, and, and the word translated reproach here means uh, without disapproval, you know, uh, not casting in the teeth. You know, uh, God's ready to give to you, family of God. You know, God wants to give to you generously. You know, God's not sitting in heaven saying, look, it's against my better judgment to bless you. You know, I really don't want to. You know, he's not throwing these blessings in our face saying, hey, look, here, you can have it. I hope you choke on it. No, no, you know, God really loves you. I mean, he really, really loves you, you know, with, with the same love that you have for your own children. But it's much deeper. So, family, look, if you need wisdom, pray and ask the Lord to reveal it to you. You know, he wants to give it to you. You know, now, that being said, there's one stipulation on this promise, okay, and it's told to us in the next verse. Doubt. You know, when you ask God, it's essential that you believe that he wants to bless you and will bless you. Okay, uh, the, the, the writer of the Hebrews wrote, look, and without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who seek him. Family of God, faithless prayer is an oxymoron. You know, if you don't believe it, why are you asking? You know, if you don't believe in him, who are you talking to? You know, and that really is the height of instability. You know, if you don't believe what you're praying, then don't expect to receive what you're praying. 
you know, Jesus said in Mark 11, Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray, ask and believe that you will have received them, and they shall be granted to you. You know, now the normal reaction to reading the verse, uh, you know, it's like, look, I... I'm going to ask for a million bucks. I'm going to ask for a Ferrari. I'm going to get a big new house. But, you know, guess, guess you know, Jesus anticipated this. And, 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 you know, James anticipated this too, you know. And he says, look, you know, when God promises to answer our prayers, uh, we have to have a proper perspective on prophets. You know, why is it that the first thing that jumps into our mind is money or security or power and position? You know, uh, if God appeared to you and said, look, I'll give you one thing, what will it be? What in the world would you ask for? You know, I would like to think that my answer would be like, Lord, Give me such an evangelistic gift that every unbeliever I talk to would instantly be saved and free from the fires of hell. But in reality, most of us would probably say, look, I want to be financially secure for the rest of my life. You know, and what a terrible perspective on this life. You know, James tells us that, that if we're in a humble circumstances, that we're supposed to glory in our high position. Well, and, and that's because Jesus taught us, look, he said, truly I say to you, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You know, we don't, have a lot of finances, you know, uh, I mean, I know I don't, uh, you know, and so I, I'm not so bound up in this world system, you know, and so we, uh, those of us who are in this boat, you know, those of us who don't have a lot of finances that, that are able to keep from being bound up in this world system, uh, you know, have an easier time staying close to God, you know, uh, or uh, have an easier time on relying on, uh, you know, God to provide, you know. But on the other hand, uh, you know, the, the, the one that's rich, the one that has all kinds of trouble, you know, uh, Sure, he's got the car, you know, he's got the suits, he's got the vacations, you know, but folks, how long is that going to last? You know, a couple more decades? You know, what is he left with? You know, Solomon was the richest man in the world in his day. You know, he had so much money uh, that, that his uh, drinking vessels were of gold, you know, uh, all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon, you know, were of pure gold. None of them were silver, you know, because it wasn't considered valuable in the days of Solomon. Now, folks, it was all gold, no silver. Folks, that is rich. You know, but with all of Solomon's money, with all of his power, with all of his fame, he wasn't happy. You know, because late in his life, you know, he said, look, I hated all the fruit of my labor. You know, I've labored so much under the sun. You know, and I've got to leave it to the person who comes after me. You know, Solomon had so much money. So much of this world's goods. But what did it do for him? You know, it couldn't add a single day to his life. You know, no, uh, the, the fact is, is that it, it, it aided in his backsliding away from the Lord. You know, and let's close here. You know, Jesus taught us that the deceitfulness of riches is, is it's like a thorn 
that grows up and chokes plants, you know, keeping them from bearing fruit. New beginnings. Family of God. Let us make a commitment in our heart to ask for wisdom instead of riches and to believe that God will freely grant it to us. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week for our short little Bible study. If you have any uh, prayer requests, praise reports, questions, comments, please feel free to post them below the video. You will get a uh, answer as soon as possible, okay? And uh, we look forward to conversing with you. Now, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.